Hey, what's up? So in the previous video, I covered how to get full stat selectable exotic gear to begin your end game journey. Definitely suggest watching that video first if you've just hit level 80 and need to get started with the gearing process. If you've already watched it, then hopefully you managed to follow along and you've been grinding Heart of Thorns maps and PvP and what have you. You've worked out some sort of build to play and you're ready to hit the big leagues. So let's talk about how to get ascended gear. Once again, I'll only be covering gear that can be stat selected because this will cover gearing for any builds you might want to run. Not only does this include newer stats like Viper's gear for conditioned DPS builds and Harriers for healers, but also more niche stats like Minstrels if you're interested in tanking or Plague Doctors for a condition slash healer build. This however does not currently include the Dragons and Ritualist stats as at the moment these are earned exclusively through End of Dragons crafting recipes. Speaking of which, this guide is strictly for obtaining gear through active content so I won't be talking about crafting here. You can also get Ascended weapons and armor from Fractals, PvP and World vs World but you need Grandmaster marks which only come from crafting or from the pvp and world versus world league boxes if you're a new player coming from other mmorpgs then you might be looking for a more you know active straightforward progression path without mindless farming or crafting gathering that sort of thing which is exactly what I want to lay out for you here in this video. This guide isn't just for new players though. Even if you're an experienced player, you might find some value in this video for alternative ways on gearing your alts. One final thing as well, you will need all the expansions for most of the content listed in this video. I'll also be working under the assumption that you have finished the End of Dragons campaign. First, let's just briefly run through why you might want to get Ascended gear. For all intents and purposes, this is the best gear in the game. Ascended provides an almost 15% stat increase over exotic gear, so if you're trying to optimize, it's a good long-term goal. This is the highest tier of gear in terms of stats, it always will be. Uh, the only tier higher than that is legendary gear, which has the same stat values, except you can swap the stats freely whenever you like. Another huge thing is that all ascended gear is account bound, so you'll never need to replace it unless you need a different stat combo, in which case all ascended gear aside from trinkets can also be stat swapped by throwing this combination of items into the Mystic Forge. You'll also need it to push higher tier fractal dungeons, as they require agony infusions which can only be slotted into ascended gear. There are mechanics that'll happen throughout the fractal that will drop an agony debuff on you which will kill you incredibly fast if you don't have enough agony resistance. So if you managed to follow along with the last video, you should have all your exotic trinkets in the stats you want except for two of them. You would have gotten these three stat selectable ones from your End of Dragons Elite Spec collection and the other two will just be filler trinkets right now, whatever you could afford. From there, you should go ahead and complete the Elite Spec collection if you haven't done so already. This will net you your Ascended Elite Spec weapon. This is easily the cheapest ascended weapon for you to get. Now the caveat is that it isn't totally stat selectable. You'll only have a few options, but you will be able to stat swap it to whatever you want. So just hold on to it. It may also not even be the weapon type that you actually want. But nonetheless, you'll need to complete this collection for the next step anyway. So next, we're going to head into Arborstone. This is the End of Dragons hub area. You would have come across this during the story. Head over to the Strike Mission Vendor and go down to this tab. You'll notice this entire list of Ascended Trinkets. Uh, but you'll notice that they require Harvest Temple Strike completions before you can buy them. And you'll also need to have completed that aforementioned Elite Spec collection. I hope you've brushed up on your skills because now we're going to jump into group content starting with strikes. Don't worry, this is relatively entry level stuff. As I said before, you can check out channels like Mr. Mystic for simple, easy to play builds or browse sites like Snow Crows, Hardstuck, or Metabattle. I'll have links to those in the description as well. Make sure you get a good understanding of your skills by reading through them and testing them out on the training golem located at this portal in Lion's Arch. Anyway, you're going to open up the LFG and head down to the Strikes Training tab if you're new. And we're going to wait until someone posts a group. 
But if you're impatient like me and you just want to get things done, then we're going to go advertise our own group and post something like Aetherblade, new player, all welcome. Yes, Aetherblade, the first strike. Why not Harvest Temple? Well, if you jump straight into the deep end, you're going to get smushed. We need to start from the bottom. You'll want to do these in order as they get increasingly harder and often share mechanics. So all of this is going to train you for that chunky Harvest Temple strike at the end. You'll also be earning valuable currency from each strike anyway, which we'll need later. Squad composition is a whole thing. Here's a handy infographic created by Arch, and I'll have a link to it in the description. It looks complicated, but honestly, it isn't. The general idea is that you just want two subgroups, each with, you know, ideally one alacrity provider and one quickness provider, with one of those also being a healer, and then the rest are DPS. We do this because boons and healing have a five-player cap, but they prioritize your subgroup. Now, you can't separate squads without a commander tag. It costs like 300 gold, don't ask me why. Uh, but you can move yourselves, so be sure to communicate and try to organize that with your group. If you're trying to organize this yourself, it'll no doubt be a little scuffed, but on the bright side, strikes don't have a timer on normal mode, so you can take your time. Work your way up through the strikes, and once you've finally completed Harvest Temple, you can pick up your Ascended Ring and Accessory. Complete it once again, and you can also grab your Amulet. Now, strikes were my first suggestion because I think it's the most engaging way to start your Ascended gearing journey. However, yes, uh, this can be quite daunting and for some it'll take a lot more time to build up that kind of confidence. But don't worry, there's another method that should be right up your alley if you want something a little more chill and it'll get you the other half of your Ascended trinkets if you did end up doing Harvest Temple. So let's talk about Living World. You probably know this by now, but these are essentially the connecting pieces of content that take place between expansions. They offer new story missions, new maps, and of course, new loot. They were completely free if you logged in when they released, but if not, they'll cost you gems. Anyway, if you're a story-focused player, then you've probably already gone ahead and bought all these. But if not, then here's a breakdown of the episodes you might want for the purposes of getting Ascended gear. Each of these maps have a vendor that offers stat-selectable Ascended trinkets, including back pieces, all in exchange for that map's harvestable currency. So grab your harvesting tools, it's time to play some Stardew Valley. Essentially, each of these maps listed have a unique harvestable currency. You can earn them through buying them off the heart vendors and also, of course, harvesting them from around the map. This can only be done once per day per character. So you can just do one of these maps if you want, but obviously you'll get them faster by doing multiple maps each day or by doing them on multiple characters. Alternatively, you can also get these stat selectable ascended trinkets from Fractals, PvP and World vs. World, but they're not my first suggestion as they take a little more investment. For the back piece specifically though, uh, I do sort of recommend ranked PvP, where all you need to do is max out your league boxes in just a single season if you're feeling daring, or you can also just earn a few chests across multiple seasons. This will give you enough tickets to buy these four back pieces here, and then you throw them into the Mystic Forge to create this ascended back piece. Another alternative is forging the Quiver of a Thousand Arrows in the Mystic Forge by throwing in these items. This will run you about 25 gold. Awesome, so you should now have basically full ascended trinkets in the stats of your choosing. It's time to move on to weapons. Earlier, we got that free ascended weapon from the Elite Spec Collection. That's great, but as I said, it might not be in the stats you want, so you'll need to stat swap it. The problem is for stats like Vipers or Harriers, uh, the insignia you'll need for the stat swap is account bound, which means you need to craft it yourself. Just hold on to it though, there is a way to bypass this, which I'll get into later. For now, let's talk about another source of free ascended weapon, the Knight of the Thorn side quest. Visual spoilers for Heart of Thorns coming up, so just don't watch the screen for this section if you care about that. After you finish the Heart of Thorns campaign, you'll receive a mail, which will unlock this side quest, and you'll find it in your achievements under side stories. It acts as a really awesome epilogue to the Heart of Thorns story and provides some much needed closure for the, um, events that transpired at the end of that expansion. It is a little involved, it'll have you traveling all over the globe, so hit up the wiki if you get lost. An important thing to note, uh, one of the items you'll need to complete this quest is a vision crystal. Almost the only way to get one of these is from crafting it, but if you don't have a discipline maxed out, then you can also get one from the final login reward on your 28th login. Just select the ascended crafting chest and you'll get your vision crystal. Once you've completed this side quest, you'll be rewarded with a... Uh 
particular ascended greatsword. However, this weapon can also be turned into a dagger, scepter, sword, or shield. These are all fully stat selectable. This is one of the only ways to get another basically free ascended weapon. If none of these are the weapon type you're after though, let's head over to Eye of the North. This is part of the Ice Brood Saga Living World Season. This little vendor here sells items for the Ice Brood Saga Strike currency, Blue Profit Shards. This includes both weapons and armor, but let's focus on the weapons for now. It'll cost you 250 blue shards for a one-hander, 500 for a two-hander, Unlike the End of Dragon Strikes, the Ice Brood Saga ones are kind of a cakewalk by comparison, so you'll have a pretty easy time with these. Here's a list of each of the strikes and how much currency they reward on completion, but you also get a bonus 5 shards each day for the daily strike. There is no weekly cap on the blue profit shards, so you can farm them to your heart's content. Alternatively, you can directly exchange green profit shards from the end of dragon strikes into blue profit shards at a 1 to 1 conversion rate. Here's the breakdown of how many green profit shards you're awarded from end of dragon strikes. You'll notice you get a lot more. However, there is a 150 weekly cap on these. Bonus tip. In your achievements, you'll find one called Return to Eye of the North. You'll get 300 blue profit shards for free just by reaching tier 3 in this achievement. For that, you just need to complete any 6 of these objectives, and it's all pretty easy stuff. You can also do the previous 3 Return to achievements for an extra 25 shards each. You only need to complete 3 of those objectives for that. The harvesting ones are super easy. All up, that gives you a whopping 400 shards right out of the gate. That's more than enough for a one-hander and almost enough for a two-hander, so hopefully that gets you started. And finally, Ascended Armor. Now, you can continue doing strikes with that method that I just outlined to purchase the rest of your Ascended Armor from this vendor, but believe it or not, the best source for Ascended Armor is Raids. In fact, it's also the best source of Ascended Weapons provided you're up for the challenge. They are incredibly rewarding if your goal is to gear up characters in Ascended gear. In fact, most of my characters are geared up from raids, not even from spending the raid currency, mind you. To start with, each boss has unique ascended drops with a very high drop rate in comparison to other modes. In fact, I still have random extra ascended pieces just laying around in my bank. Then there's the raid currency, magnetite shards. You earn them for boss kills, but similar to strikes, you'll also still get some even if you fail. These have a 300 weekly cap, not including these mini drops which you can trade in for extra magnetite shards. And the prices are the same as the strike ascended gear. You'll notice these also have a gold cost, but the good news is that each raid boss kill gives you a flat 2 gold. The Call of the Mist's wing for the week, it's the one with this icon, gives double the gold reward on each boss kill. So yeah, you'll most likely have enough gold from just killing the bosses. Bonus fun fact. For the first kill on any of these bosses with their challenge mode active, you'll get their top tier supplies box. And in this, you'll get a free insignia and inscription of your choice, which you can use in that Mystic Forge recipe I mentioned earlier to stat swap any ascended gear you've earned, including that elite spec weapon. On top of all of this, there's also the Envoy Armor Collection, which is your path to a full set of legendary armor. Even though this collection is for the legendary set at the end, the two sub-collections leading up to that final one each reward a full set of stat-selectable ascended armor. That is effectively two free sets of ascended armor, so have a look for a guide before you get started into your raiding journey, because there's a few prerequisites and uh, time-gated stuff you might want to grab before you start this collection. Now to get into raids, you'll essentially do the same thing as you did for strikes. Pop open the LFG and wait around or open up your own. A recent update added the emboldened mode, which similar to Call of the Mists, rotates to a different wing each week and it's indicated by this icon. This is basically an easy mode where each death stacks up a buff that increases your health and damage. If you're new to raids, I'd recommend just dipping your toes in each week by taking on the emboldened wing. You'll most likely see groups for it under the training tab. Even still, they're often a little more involved than the strikes, so be sure to read up on some mechanics beforehand for the bosses you intend on doing. Muckluck has an excellent get to the point guide series where he breaks down each boss's mechanics in a very clear and concise format. 
Highly recommend watching those. To group up, you can also join various training discords. The Snow Crows website lists out a good number of them, but I'll specifically shout out the Skyn Gang Discord run by community member Snebzor. He describes it as Tinder for raid groups, which is exactly what it is. Hopefully you find some groups to be able to play with so that you can raid to your heart's content and earn enough magnetite shards to be able to purchase the rest of your ascended gear. So that's it, you're done. Full ascended gear with the stats of your choosing. You now have essentially the best gear in the game in terms of stats. So go forth and enjoy everything else the end game has to offer. Move up the fractal levels while slotting in agony infusions into that ascended gear to push even higher. Earn skins to take part in the true end game. Fashion Wars 2. Take on the other raid bosses as you progress your legendary armor journey. Will I do a legendary gearing guide? Probably not. I'm still on that journey myself, but hopefully these last two videos will suffice and they've helped you out in some sort of way. If it did, feel free to support the channel by giving this video a like, share it with your friends if they need a little bit of direction, especially with the Steam launch coming around the corner, there's gonna be a whole lot of new players. So feel free to comment below if you've got any other questions. Anyway, that's it for now. Uh, for more Guild Wars 2 videos, be sure to subscribe, but as always, I'll catch you later. Thank <laughs> you.